Hey gang, I'm Lindsey Thomas with QDMA, and this is Whitetail Creek on the QDMA headquarters property in Georgia. We like to get out in late summer and walk the creek to keep an eye out for hemorrhagic disease. That's the family of viruses that includes EHD and blue tongue, which can be deadly for whitetails in some areas in late summer and early fall, as I'm sure you know. Now, why is EHD associated with the creek here? There's two reasons. First, the viruses are transmitted by a biting gnat or midge that feeds on the blood of deer. And those gnats breed and reproduce in shallow waters like this, small ponds, mud holes, and, and nearly dry creeks where the water is shallow, warm, low quality, and murky. That's ideal breeding conditions for that gnat. Well, in late summer and early fall, when it tends to be dry and hot, thirsty whitetails congregate in places like this to quench their thirst, and you end up with a collision of breeding gnats and thirsty whitetails, and that's how outbreaks of hemorrhagic disease happen. Secondly, once a whitetail is infected with one of these viruses, one of the symptoms is fever, high fever. And so these whitetails that are sick tend to come to bodies of water to cool off. They will literally get in the water to cool off and of course drink because they're thirsty. And so it is very common to find sick, dying, or dead whitetails during an outbreak in creeks like this one, floating in ponds and near bodies of water. That's why it's a good idea to monitor creeks and small bodies of water this time of year so that you can catch signs of EHD early. If you're out and about and you smell something dead on the wind, follow it up and see what it is. Find out if it's a deer. I found a few deer over the years right here in this creek that have died of hemorrhagic disease in late summer. What do you do if you find a sick, dying, or dead deer this summer? Well, you wanna report that as quickly as you can to the nearest state agency wildlife biologist. Be ready to give them a precise location of where you found the deer, maybe even GPS coordinates, because they may want to come out and collect samples for testing, provided the deer hasn't been dead too long already. Unfortunately, there's not much else we can do to prevent these virus outbreaks. The gnats prefer shallow, warm, low quality mud holes for breeding, and often that's all that's left for deer to drink from when we have severe droughts. They're opportunistic feeders and will spread the virus to fawns, does, and bucks alike. No sex or age of deer is more susceptible to EHD than others. The good news is most outbreaks of EHD are not severe. A few deer might die and some even recover from the virus and live. It doesn't kill all deer. Most deer populations eventually recover. It's very important for hunters to understand diseases like EHD and especially the differences between these viruses and diseases like chronic wasting disease or CWD. If you want to know more, we have a ton of information at the QDMA website, qdma.com, but that's because QDMA is where deer hunters belong. We hope you'll become a member today and support our nonprofit mission of ensuring the future of whitetail deer.